Okay, so I just want to go through a few of the questions on the solubility curves worksheet two. Um, it's quite difficult to explain these questions in any other way than simply going through them and referring to the solubility curves graph. So I'm just picking from a few in this section of the assignment. So this is on page two. And I'm going to just try to pick out ones that uh, do a different type of each kind of question. So I'm going to start with question 15. Okay, and uh, for question 15, what it sa says is, at what temperature can you dissolve a maximum of 35 grams of potassium nitrate in 30 grams of water? Okay, so we're paying attention to a couple things here. The word maximum would indicate that we're dealing with a saturated solution. Okay, and a saturated solution on a solubility curve graph is the curve itself. That curve shows you the saturation point at all the various temperatures for all the different um, compounds that are shown on that particular graph. The other thing we want to pay attention to is that we're only in 30 grams of water. The solubility curve was constructed based on um, these compounds being dissolved in 100 grams of water. So before we can go read that graph, what we have to do is we have to set up um, equivalent fractions. So 35 grams of potassium nitrate, and that's in 30 grams of water. What is the equivalent if we have 100 grams of water? So to solve for this x value, you cross multiply. So I would get 3,500 is equal to 30x. And then to solve for x, I would divide both sides by 30. So that would end up giving me 116.67 grams. Okay, now this isn't the answer to this question. So the question is asking us for a temperature. So this value is the number of grams that can be dissolved in 100 grams of water to make a saturated solution. So we need to go find this point on the graph and see at what temperature does that occur. So if we go and look, we're looking for potassium nitrate. Okay, so potassium nitrate is this curve here. And the value is 116.67. So we can't pinpoint that precise location, but we can kind of get fairly close. So I would say somewhere around there. And from there, then I just go straight down <clears throat> and I read what temperature that occurs at. And if I went straight down, I'd hit at about 62 or 63 degrees. So I put on the answer key, I put approximately 63 degrees Celsius. If you said 62 or 61 or 64, all of that would be acceptable. Okay, so there's one type of question. Now, if you go on to question 16, it's the exact same type of question, just a different compound with uh, different values. What you'll find with this one is, although I put on the answer key that the answer is zero degrees Celsius, this one actually, there's quite a wide range of answers that would be acceptable here. Anywhere from zero to 30 degrees Celsius is fine because <clears throat> when you set up your equivalent fraction, you end up getting 36 grams of sodium chloride in 100 grams of water is the saturation point. Um, so when you look at that, 36 grams is about here. Um, this is the line for sodium chloride. So I said zero, but if you look at 10 degrees, it looks like it's about 36 as well. Same with 20 even 30. I mean, you could also argue 40. 40 might start to be getting closer to 37. So anywhere in that range would really be fine for that question. 
Okay, let's try one that's a little bit different. Okay, so questions 17, 18, and 14 are all the same type of question. What mass of potassium chloride is needed to saturate 150 grams of water at 35 degrees Celsius? So for this type of question, again, we're looking for saturation points. So we're going to have a point right on the curve for KCl. We have a temperature, but we're dealing with 150 grams instead of 100. So before we can set up our equivalent fractions, we need to find the saturation point for 100 grams of water, and then we can convert it to an equivalent fraction. So let's do that. So here, I'm just going to get rid of some of these guys here. Here is KCL, this curve here. And our temperature is 35. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to hit about there. Okay. So on the answer key, I read that to be 36 grams. You might have said 37. Um, sort of somewhere in that range, 36 or 37. I'm going to stick with 36 because that's what's on the answer key. But like I said, there's more than one except, there's kind of a range of acceptable answers here. So 36 grams of potassium chloride dissolves in 100 grams of water and that is saturated. So what would be the equivalent fraction? if we have 150 grams of water. So crisscross 150 times 36, 5,400, 100 times X. And then I'm gonna or sorry, divide both sides by 100 to get 54 grams of KCl can dissolve in 150 grams of water at 35 degrees Celsius to make a saturated solution. So 18 and 14 would be approached in this exact same way. Now I'm gonna do one more on the next page and that's 20. Now 20 is a bit tricky and I realized when I looked at the answer key that I kind of included an unnecessary step in there. So I'm going to simplify the answer here for you and then hopefully it'll make more sense. So here it says, if a saturated solution of potassium nitrate in 30 grams of water at 25 degrees Celsius is heated to 60 degrees Celsius, how much more solid potassium nitrate must be added to saturate the solution? Okay, so the first thing you want to do is wrap your head around what's actually happening. So we've got a saturated solution at 25, and now we're going to heat 25 degrees Celsius, sorry, and now we're going to heat it up to 60. We know as we heat it, it's able to hold more and more of the solid solute, which is potassium nitrate. So the hotter the solution gets, typically the more solute it can dissolve. Okay. Um, Unless, of course, it's one of the curves that curves downward. But potassium nitrate is one of the upward curves. So it's going to get more and more soluble. So how much more soluble? How much more can you add if you heat it up, um, in this case, 35 degrees? Okay. But our issue here is that this is 30 grams of water. So if we want to figure this out, we're going to first figure this problem out based on 100 grams of water, and then we're going to scale our answer down to deal with 30 grams of water. So I'm going to um, go to my chart here, or my graph. I'm going to get rid of some of these dots I've made so we don't get mixed up. And I've got two temperatures I need to focus on. And those are um, 25 degrees and 60 degrees. Okay, so 25 degrees is here. Okay, so I'm going to make a point about there. This is the potassium nitrate curve. And 60, I need to scroll up here. 60 hits about here. Okay, so I've got, now you may read this as 40 grams, I read it as 39. Again, 
there's going to be some give and take here. So I'm going to stick with 39 grams and I've got 112 grams. So a saturated solution of potassium nitrate at 25 degrees holds 39 grams and at 60 degrees holds 112 grams. So the, the amount of solute you add is the difference between those two values. So let's go back. So if, if we were dealing with, whoops, If we were dealing with 100 grams of water, we would take that 112 grams and we'd subtract the 39 grams to find that there's a difference there of 73 grams. So if I had 100 grams of water, I would add 73 grams um, in order to saturate the solution at 60 degrees when it's heated from 25. But I have 30 grams, so what I'll do is I'll go, okay, I would add 73 grams of potassium nitrate if I had 100 grams of water. So how much would I add if I only have 30 grams of water? So the old crisscross and I didn't show all my steps here so I can't remember what 30 times 73 is off the top of my head but 30 times 73 100 times x, and then you divide both sides by 100 to get that x is equal to 21.9 grams. So if I had 30 grams of water and I was to heat from this temperature to this one, I would need to add 21.9 grams to make that solution saturated. Must be added. 29 grams, I should say, of KNO3 must be added. Okay, so hopefully that helps you um, interpret the answer key. And um, if you were having any trouble with any of those questions, I hope that clarifies it for you.